the world we live in is based around nation states or states. Some states are more like empires, uh, not nations. Uh, Russia being a classic example. And some are multiracial, multicultural, like the US, and they're based around an idea and a flag rather than um, the traditional idea of nationalism. Uh, but having said that, uh, we live in a world wherein you have passports, uh, you have rights uh, as citizens, or, or maybe not so many rights if you don't live in a democracy, but you, uh, you, you, can, you have certainly have the right to, to reside there, if not to live. Um, and, uh, and borders are meant uh, to make sure that people just can't come in willy-nilly into your country, because after all, um, your state has a responsibility to the people who live within it. And you don't want to be paying for healthcare, or for that matter, education, or for that matter, um, anything else. Or, or, or simply, you may want to avoid overcrowding if you are a, a state that is not very highly populated. So the world we live in is a world of borders, um, absolutely. And, um, and if you took away borders, uh, m many of the poor would just flee from places like Africa or Asia and just come over. In fact, um, Canada would be full of Punjabis, leave aside other Indians. Um, and uh, Italy would be full of Arabs and Africans. And we could go on and, um, and go forth. But the bottom line is that, yes, we live in a world of borders, but it's a question of how hard the borders should be. Do you make exceptions uh, when people are in duress? Uh, do you allow for some um, asylum? Do you allow for merit-based uh, immigration? Do you allow for uh, bona fide people um, seeking to travel, seeking to explore, to come and live in your country for a while? Uh, do you acknowledge uh, the possibility not just of uh, uh, people uh, coming over for asylum or after persecution, but also uh, economic uh, progress. And these are all tricky questions because if you take a hard line, uh, let's say the US takes a hard line, then the economy would stop tomorrow. Who's doing the meatpacking? Who is mowing the lawns? Who is working uh, in the automobile repair shops? It is invariably people who've come south of the Rio Grande. They may be Mexicans, they may be Guatemal Guatemalans, uh, uh, they may be um, uh, from further south. And, uh, and similarly, if you, if you go to Europe, uh, a lot of labor, both highly skilled and, uh, and uh, not so highly skilled, is now coming from, uh, uh, from the less affluent countries. Uh, so border security is um, just like the sun today. It, it, it is important. But if you, if you go from border security to xenophobia, to, uh, to introversion, to, to uh, painting the other as an enemy. Uh, you are on a very tricky slope of persecuting minorities in your own countries and destroying trust uh, with your neighbors and others. And I think that is the position we are in today. And so we've got to roll back and we've got to, we've got to look at the other side of the equation and say, why do people immigrate? Um, for instance, why do people flee to Europe across the perilous Mediterranean Sea? And the answer is, well, they're seeking prosperity, they're seeking a better life, they're seeking escape. And so somehow Europe has to export prosperity south, otherwise it will import people north. S the same holds true for the US and the same holds true for any affluent country. And no one really likes um, to uproot themselves. I say that as an immigrant. Um, if uh, things were hunky-dory in India, uh, would I spend as much time in Europe and the US? The answer is probably not. Uh, I ended up in Europe and America in search of opportunities. But every single day, a part of me does miss home. And so uh, I don't think immigration is as big a problem 
and border security is as big of a problem as it is made out to be. If we could sort, uh, we could sort uh, the way the global economy works and the way the world works.